My name is Evan Gappelberg. I'm CEO of Nextech Air Solutions. I'm sure everybody watching this is familiar with my name by now um, and my company, Nextech AR Solutions. We're here today to talk about uh, something that I'm calling short and distort. Short and distort is um, a tactic used by short sellers. Um, and basically, you know, what it, what it describes is, is um, a group or a person that, you know, instead of buying a stock in question, the perpetrators typically short the targeted company first. Then they release, theoretically, independent reports and analysis that is little more than a thinly veiled smear campaign. Once the stock has fallen, the parties involved buy to cover bank their profit, and hopefully disappear. Short and distort artists string together information in their report that may or may not be germane, let alone accurate under the guise of, quote, personal opinion that makes it very hard to prosecute. They rely on selected information that is taken out of context, partial truths, and of course their favorite, tactic inferences. Ethics have very little to do with how they play the game. Their sole interest is in the creation of a short-term uh, fear, angst in the market that causes investors to bail so they make money buying uh, depressed shares. Obviously, this is not pleasant for anybody. Short and distort artists prey on panic. They have a demoralizing effect that can hurt not only individual investors, but the companies they target by slowing down financing and growth. So why do we bring up short and distort? Because Nathan Anderson is using short and distort against Next Tech AR Solutions, which is the company I'm CEO of. So I figured, you know, as since Nathan knows who I am, all of our investors know who I am, we should know a little bit about Nathan Anderson. So who is Nathan Anderson? He is the founder at Hindenburg Research. I'm on uh, his LinkedIn profile. He's out of New York. I'm out of New York. Um, so we have that in common. Um, I've been in the investment industry since 1987. That's when I got my start. So that's quite a while ago. Um, he founded Hindenburg Research November 2018, which is interesting because we went public November 2018. Next Tech, you know, first trading day was October 31st. Um, and so basically, you know, November was really our first month as a publicly traded company. And that was Nathan Anderson's, Nathan's first month with Hindenburg Research. Now I call myself and Next Tech a startup, a very young company. Um, and so I guess that makes Hindenburg Research a startup as well. Being that they've been at this for uh, just over a year, I think it's fair to say that Nathan is working at a startup. Uh, when you go back and you look at Nathan before Hindenburg, you have Clarity Spring that he was CEO and co-founder of April 15th to December uh, 2018. Uh, I don't know what happened there. He was there for three years, nine months. But when I look up um, their profile, there's you know less than 10 employees working there. So again, I would have to call that a, a startup. When you go to uh, you know the next place he was at, Tangent Capital. I've never heard of any of these firms, by the way. So, you know, they must be tiny, tiny. Um, so Tangent Capital, when I look online, it shows that, you know, there's four people working there. Capital raising um, for, for, you know, family offices. Uh, before that, he was at Blue Heron Capital for two years. Uh, before that, he was an account executive at Facet Research Systems. Before that, he graduated from, it looks like, the University of Connecticut in 2006. So, figure he was 21 when he graduated in 2006. 
It's 14 years later. That makes Mr. Nathan Anderson roughly 35 years old. Certainly a youngster um, and certainly somebody who, uh, who has found his niche, short and distort. So that's Nathan Anderson, founder of the Hindenburg Report. Not a lot of anything that we could really hang our hats on and say like, you know, Nathan really crushed it um, in his life. Uh, it's not that I can point to anything where Nathan, you know, doesn't look like he's much of a standout to me. So let's look at the Hindenburg Report. Um, you know, Nathan has uh, taken great pains to um, smear uh, Nextech AR Solutions, talks about us as a relentless stock promotion scheme, sketchy related party transactions, and vaporware wear products. So we're going to rebut um, a lot of what he says here. Again, keep in mind that, you know, a lot of this is inference. A lot of this is innuendo. There's not, not a, a lot of fact here. Um, and when you think about Nathan Anderson, he says at the very end of his report, I'm just going to scroll to the end because it's important that everybody understand what we're talking about here. So at the very end of his very lengthy uh, misguided report, he says, um, you know, disclosure, disclosure, we are short sh shares of Next Tech. And um, he's basically saying that, uh, you know, this is my opinion. Um, and that's pretty much it. So, you know, he is literally giving you his opinion on a company that I founded and have invested in. Uh, just to be clear to everybody listening, um, when we started Next Tech, we priced our first offering at 25 cents. I bought 500,000 shares. The, there were warrants. I bought another 500,000 shares at 50 cents. I invested again and again and again. My last investment in Next Tech was $500,000 US that I put into um, a private placement. And so I continue to invest in Next Tech. Um, I have not sold any stock. In fact, uh, myself, Paul Duffy, and Kashif Malik, so the president, the CEO, and the CFO, we take all of our pay in Next Tech stock. So when you talk about, you know, next tech stock in this big pump, um, pump and dump, which he, he, you know, he talks about us as, um, clearly that's not the case because all we do is invest, 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 and get paid in stock, um, which means that we're invested for the long haul. So let's get started with um, this report. He talks about um, our business, and he talks about our eye-popping revenue growth. We did buy two small e-commerce businesses in early uh, 2019. 2019 was our first year, really, as a public company, our first year in business. And you know, just so everybody understands, augmented reality is a new industry. There is no 800-pound gorilla in the AR space. There's no company that's uh, printing money. We are a pioneer. Uh, it's the early days. We are just getting started. That's what I've said repeatedly. And it is still the case, although our business is accelerating. And we've always said that 2020 was going to be the breakout year for us. So if you look at 2019 um, and you look at what Hindenburg and Nathan is talking about, he talks about our e-com business, as you can see here, our e-com revenue of $1.5 million and, you know, corporate and tech, uh, just a little over 3000. So in the early days, we acquired two e-com businesses. Uh, one is a vacuum cleaner, uh, you know, e-com business. So, you know, we sell top brands like Mila and Dyson, um, and Eureka. And, uh, that business is absolutely crushing it. Our team has turned it around. 
and turned it into uh, a very fast growing business. When I say on life support, uh, you know, we, I was able to purchase that at a fire sale price, um, inject a little bit of capital in and then uh, sell it up to Next Tech and Next Tech because it has um, technology as well as a team. Um, we were able to bring in uh, both the tech and the team that has turned that business into a money-making machine for Next Tech shareholders. And so it's been a huge win for us. It's also been a, an opportunity for us to use it as a test bed, um, which is a big part of why we purchased it. We wanted to test our technology out in the e-commerce world, uh, in the real world. We've been able to do that with the vacuum cleaner business and then ultimately with a pet supplement business. And again, those businesses are uh, doing very, very well and we're very happy with those purchases. And we continue to, to look at other opportunities in the space as well. So, you know, he talks about, um, Mr. Nathan talks about, you know, how that was a bad thing for the company and for its shareholders. And I would strongly, strongly argue that it was a very, very good thing. It reduces our burn rate, allows us to uh, have cash flow coming in, allows us to have um, our revenue growing uh, at a rapid clip and it allows us to test our technology. There's nothing bad about it. And when you think about tech companies, I mean, Amazon's a perfect example. They own Whole Foods. Does Amazon get valued as a supermarket? No. Amazon's a tech company. They're testing new technology in Whole Foods. If you read uh, you know, the tech reports, they're testing uh, technology where you know, there's no cashier, where you can walk in and out of the store, uh, you have kind of a fob in your pocket, and you, no cash. It's a cashless transaction. You know, that's what Amazon is building. And so they needed a test case. They needed to be able to test their tech out. That's exactly the same thing that Next Tech has been doing with its vacuum cleaner business. And if you look at our ad network, um, right now we're running ads. We're using our vacuum cleaner market business to test e-commerce ads using our 3D AR ad network. It is exactly what we said it was, and we're using it for exactly uh, what we said, which is testing new technologies. And again, we are a technology company. That is our heart and soul. Uh, the businesses that we operate, which include e-commerce, provide us with revenue while we're building our technology out and test cases um, to test our technology before we bring it to market. So again, I strongly, strongly, strongly argue with Nathan, Nathan uh, and his opinion uh, about our e-commerce businesses. Um, and everybody's allowed an opinion. You know, Nathan doesn't have to invest, uh, but I take offense when he says that it's, it's a negative. So, you know, here we are um, just, you know, moving along. He talks about this 70% uh, discount to the market financing. And I've spoken about this previously. We did do a financing when the stock was 93 cents. We, you know, we did a price reservation at 75 cents. We sold $3 million worth of stock. It was 100% above board. It was filed with the CSC. The one thing Nathan doesn't realize is that unlike him, we have to answer to IROC. We have to answer to regulators. He doesn't. And so everything we've done, we've done according to the rules of law, according to what we have to do as a public company. And uh, we wouldn't do it any other way. And so, you know, there was no 70% discount to the market. It was a 20% discount to the market. So again, misrepresenting, um, that's what uh, <laughs> Nathan has done. He's shorting and then distorting. That's what he has done. Shorted our stock and then distorted the truth. It's not accurate that he says that we sold stock at a 70% discount to the market. Remember, I'm a large shareholder, the largest single shareholder. I've purchased my shares. Why would I do anything to hurt shareholders when I'm the largest shareholder? It simply makes no sense. 
Moving right along, he says, you know, we've thoroughly pumped the stock. Um, it's just nonsense. You know, our investors have uh, been listening to the story. We've been hitting our milestones and the stock has reacted. And that's really as simple as it gets. Um, the only dump is from uh, Nathan and his cohorts um, and everybody that, that you know, he hires to, uh, to work with him on his short and distort campaign. Um, so yeah, we were spun out of a cannabis uh, company called Future Farm Technologies. Again, this is all public information. He's not uncovering any great um, you know, hidden truth here. Um, Future Farm Technologies, I brought in some seed capital into that company back in 2016. It went from five cents to uh, a high of almost two dollars in 18 months. Uh, along the way, I was working with the CEO, Bill Gilday, and um, we formed an entity inside of Future Farm. Ultimately, it was spun out as an augmented reality company. Great deal for Next Tech, great deal for Future Farm shareholders. In fact, Future Farm shareholders got free shares in Next Tech. It was a win win situation. Investors in Next Tech um, were able to. Uh, participate in augmented reality and the investors in Future Farm were able to get a free dividend of stock. So yeah, we were spun out from Future Farm Technologies. I mean, really, that's all I'm going to say about that. It was a successful spin out and a successful deal for everybody involved. Um, now, Nathan, 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 Evan Gappelberg, that's me, has a history of stock promotion and business failures. You know, Nathan, I've never met you, but I'd like to meet you. I really would. And I'd like to set you straight because what you're saying, again, is a smear campaign. Um, you know, this is, uh, you know, borderline um, libel for defamation. And, you know, as far as I can tell, if anything, Nathan... Um, you're the only one who uh, has a history, uh, from what I can tell. Uh, so Next Tech CEO Evan Gappelberg owns a securities firm called Atlas Advisors. So I started Atlas in 1999. That was when uh, Nathan was still back in uh, high school, possibly junior high school. Um, Atlas was a successful firm for, for over two decades uh, where I was advising public companies. Atlas was an advisory firm uh, where for decades I helped uh, many public companies succeed. Um, I did have some uh, outside um, employees, you know, they were basically contractors uh, that, you know, Nathan is referencing here, the proactive guy, uh, the guy from Investology, Venture Research. These were just guys I used when I needed them, but uh, they were not full-time employees at all. Um, and that's really it about Atlas. Um, yeah, I worked on Wall Street, like I said, starting in 1987. And uh, I underwrote Take-Two Interactive, which was a huge hit. Even Nathan talks about it, but instead of talking about it as a positive, he says it was one of the only success stories underwritten by Whale Securities. Uh, I don't know about that, Nathan. There was a lot of success stories that uh, Whale Securities underwrote. You weren't there. I don't even know if you were born. Well, I think you were in high school. Yeah, you were just in high school, maybe junior high school back then. Um, that was when I was on Wall Street. You were a junior high school student. How funny is that? But anyway, Nathan, um, the fact is, is that Take Two was a huge success. Um, I, I wasn't the principal at Whale Securities. I wasn't CEO. I wasn't a director. Whatever regulatory problems they had, I was unaware of them and uninvolved in any of them. Had nothing to do with any of it. So the idea that I'm responsible for Whale Securities in, 19, in the 1990s is laughable. 
Moving on to Taxi Wand and the Britney Spears Concert Wand. Now, these are my family members. These are my babies. I invented the Taxi Wand, which was really the Uber before Uber. Um, this was back in uh, the 90s when I was still on Wall Street. And the Taxi Wand, I went over to China. I set up manufacturing. I imported um, and ultimately, we turned taxi wands into concert wands. You can see Britney is basically, you know, wearing a, a, the same taxi wand, only it's now a concert wand. So it turned from taxi wand into wand world. Wand world uh, was a huge success for me. Huge success. I sold wands to Madison Square Garden, Universal Studios, Ringling Brothers and Barnum and & Bailey Circus. Uh, Disney was my biggest customer, uh, specifically Disney on Ice. We sold tens of millions of these wands. It was the first LED light-up toy, huge success, and then on to the next thing. That's the story with Wand World, Britney Spears Concert Wand, and Taxi Wand. I still have all these samples in my office. I have probably 20 different wands sitting in my office that I look at Again, is my, my pride and joy, very fun time in my life, and very successful. And again, Nathan, I think you were in junior high school when this was happening. So not sure you have really any reference point. Um, clearly you don't. And you really shouldn't be talking about things that you don't know anything about because it takes away from any credibility that you might have. Honestly, I was shocked that you brought in Wan World. Shocked. You're in junior high school <laughs> and you're, I, I'm out there selling wands and you're calling me um, unsuccessful. It's kind of a, a, you know, a bad joke. Anyway, moving forward. Um, yeah, I'm not going to address every line here, but you know, he repeats a lot of the same inaccuracies. Um, he talks about my wife's chocolate business. Yes, we own the Hampton Chocolate Factory. It's a summer uh, kind of hobby business. And yeah, we talked with Future Farm and, and we, we were going to do a, a cannabis infused chocolate. It never panned out. It was a good idea, um, but you know, Future Farm didn't want to move forward with that so we didn't no big deal uh, we still have the the hampton chocolate factory business it's a huge success anybody that comes out to the hamptons stop by uh we'd love to to see you um let's talk about next tech's promotional campaign we feel the best thing that we can do for our investors is to tell our story and you know i don't look at promote as negative um, I look at promote as um, really more about transparency, just explaining to our, our clients that we are signing up customers. When we sign up a customer, it doesn't mean they're a million dollar customer. Obviously, these are, you know, test cases, use cases. These are companies that are saying, OK, next tech AR solutions, let's try your augmented reality. We want to try it out. We're a first mover. We believe in uh, in augmented reality, let's test it. And so we did a lot of testing, a lot of testing in 2019. We tested partnerships, we tested um, our augmented reality, and all of that is playing out perfectly for us in 2020. And, you know, 2020 is our breakout year for augmented reality, and it really is the breakout year for the industry not just next tech because we are part of the augmented reality industry it's important again for investors to know that nathan if you did any research um, any real research you'd see that augmented reality um, is just starting to get going and 2020 is a breakout year so you know once again here's our uh, list of paid promoters um, yes we employ starwood research um, yeah, they have 150,000 uh, options. Um, it says that uh, we also have Zach's small cap research. 
Yes, Zaxx is very reputable. Um, and we hired them to write a research report about us. You know, this is third party independent research. Um, so, you know, it, it's used by small cap firms. Why? Because Goldman Sachs is not going to write a research report about a small cap stocks. Morgan Stanley is not going to write a research. The big brokerage firms, and pretty much that's all that's left, they're not writing research reports. So for us to get any research written, we have to go out and pay. It's just the nature of the market. Proactive investors, they do a great job. They put out videos and articles. Um, we do interviews with them once or twice a week. We love proactive. Uh, again, we're trying to be transparent and communicate to our uh, investors. We pay them $25,000 a year. I don't think that's a ton of money. Um, financial buzz, again, um, we use them, not a ton of money. You know, overall, I think we pay about $20,000 a month in, um, in paid uh, promotion. Uh, CFN Media, we don't work with anymore. We tried doing a deal with them. It worked for a little while and then, you know, it stopped. Um, if you look at our customers, you know, you talk about uh, Budweiser. Yes, we signed a deal with Budweiser. We launched it and Budweiser, you know, being Budweiser, they didn't spend a lot of time on it and didn't promote it in a big way. Um, you know, we're the tech company. We provided the technology, but we don't have control over what Budweiser does beyond that. So, um, you know, I think that's on Bud, not on Next Tech. Uh, the fact is, though, nothing wrong with the business that we did with them. We created a, a, an experience to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the Bud stage. It worked. Um, for this particular customer, I don't know. They, she couldn't get it to work for whatever reason. It does work. You could go onto our website. We have videos of it working. Of course it worked. Otherwise, Budweiser would not have paid us. And we did get paid. So it worked. Budweiser paid us. Next. Um, you know, you look at uh, Cannabis FN, like I said, we tried working with them. Worked for a little while. And then it didn't work. And that's the way business is sometimes. Now, you talk about the reality of our products. Um, you know, it, Fish Out of Water, again, signed a partnership deal with them. They didn't do anything. Um, it's not much we can do. We're a tech company. We were relying on them to bring us clients. They didn't bring clients. Uh, Reef is one of our customers. They're on the HootView platform. Um, you know, they're our customer. They pay us. Uh, Webby, another new customer, you know, Nathan spends a lot of times um, talking about Webby. Um, you know, he should have spent more time talking to Walther because it's interesting and it's glaring that he has not mentioned Walther Arms in his report, not once. They're our biggest customer. How come he didn't mention them? Clearly, he called all of our customers. Clearly. I wonder why he didn't mention Walther Arms here and what they had to say. Maybe it's because they said positive things. And let's be clear again. Nathan's job is to short and distort. Short and distort. That's it. Strings together information that may or not may or not be germane let alone accurate and then you know puts it out there to scare investors so you know let's keep going here um not going to play any of these audios other than to say i'm going to you know continue foot traffic again you know this is when we were looking at cannabis back in april of 2019 i mean come on we were just getting started. We met these guys at a cannabis uh, conference, signed a deal with them, and you know, not much came of it. But uh, we were we were looking for business as any st small startup is, um, and and sometimes that happens. Romeo's Gold. Now, this one is one of my favorites because um, he took great pains. Look at all this. Look at all this. We spoke to Romeo's. Look at all this. This is all from. This is 
all of Nathan. Oh, look how much airtime he's giving to Romeo's gold. He called them, spoke to a CFO, a rent a CFO, who said he doesn't know anything about Next Tech. Well, we didn't sign a deal with the CFO. We signed a deal with the CEO, and he even mentions it on the call, Tom Drivis. But he didn't talk to Tom. Now, the CFO is a rent-to-CFO. Clearly, he, you know, he's got other uh, customers. Uh, he, he's got like a dozen clients that he does CFO work for, but he's not an operator. So, of course, he didn't know. Uh, I called Tom. Tom's on record. I uh, recorded him refuting this nonsense that Nathan would have you believe that, you know, we didn't sign a deal with Romeos. We did. Um, in fact, I'm just going to go to the next tech um, page thrilled customers you go to our website next tech AR solutions here we go it's not enough these days to aim for just happy customers instead let's aim for thrilled customers so here are thrilled customers it's a nice list of customers and Nathan would have you believe we don't have any um, here's some uh, you know, testimonials. We chose Next Tech to ARTize uh, our AVIA system because we know it will provide a better level of education for our product and empower the consumer's path to purchase as they shop on our website. We're excited to provide our customers an AR shopping experience like no other in the agricultural industry. That's Kevin, co founder of Just Vertical. And we even have uh, a dashboard here. You could click on and see the data yourself. Here is the Just Vertical dashboard, 30-day uh, view. What you see is 1,342 total views, 170 total opens, 12.7% uh, open rate. That's substantial. Uh, the dwell time is off the charts. 13 uh, hours of dwell time is a lot of dwell time. Uh, the average dwell time being 4.72 minutes. Um, if you think about it, uh, this is uh, a product that costs over a thousand dollars, and um, we know that they've been able to sell more product. Um, they've communicated that to us at Just Vertical, and so if you think about it, they're paying us, you know, 50 bucks a month. To host this for them uh, and they're generating many thousands of dollars in revenue so it's a grand slam for just vertical another thrilled customer uh, they were just in our office the other day and uh, you're welcome to call and talk to them um, here's walter arms click here to play video again you could go onto our website go to the customer tab and see all this yourself uh, another customer, Air Sniper, Stewart's very happy. Another customer, testimonial, LA Police Gear, Mark Hedman, very happy. Another customer, Zoltan David, very happy. Another customer, Joshua, very happy. We're signing up customers and they are thrilled. They are reordering. Um, and, you know, let's be clear what, what uh, Nathan has here is pure nonsense pure nonsense short and distort short and distort that is all he is about um i'm you know not going to address each one of these other than to say short and distort back to our uh ecom businesses we already talked about that uh, i'm not going to address it again and again he likes to bring it up over and over again, but for us, it's a huge positive. And um, if anybody wants a vacuum cleaner, just email me and we'll send you a coupon, 20% off. So we're running, I think, uh, a Valentine's Day sale. Now, let's talk about um, this super exciting headline 
Nextex slew of highly questionable related party transactions. Again, you have um, short and distort Mr. Nathan here um, talking about related party transactions. So, yes, I purchased along with the COO uh, the vacuum cleaner business. This is fully disclosed in our filings. Um, we paid almost $500,000 US for the business and inventory. And guess what? We sold it to Next Tech. Now, this statement, likely pocketing millions for stepping in the middle, is blatantly false and again, distorting reality. So, we sold it for 2 million shares of Next Tech stock haven't sold the share, restricted shares. So think about it for a second. Um, you put up almost a half a million dollars in, in cold hard cash and you get two million uh, shares that you don't sell. Pocketing millions? No, how about out of pocket hundreds of thousands of dollars? So, you know, not only that, the, the businesses um, have been audited by our auditors. Um, we have our um, independent party, uh, third party report done on the valuation of those businesses. So, you know, everything that we did is above board. The one thing that Nathan uh, doesn't have to adhere to are rules and laws. Um, he's able to do whatever he wants. And, you know, hide behind the fact that it's, hey, it's just my opinion. As CEO of a public company, as an officer and director, um, we have to live by the letter of the law. Rules and regulations mean something to us. And so we follow them. Um, so, you know, here is, uh, you know, more nonsense from, from, uh, <laughs> from Nathan You know, he's got me quoted here. How much did you originally pay when it was purchased? And um, didn't understand, you know. Oh, oh, by the way, you know, another interesting little factoid of Mr. Short and Distort, uh, Nathan, is that when he called me, he lied. He's a liar. I mean, not that that's new news, but this is me Specifically, he, call, he had somebody call me um, and pose as an editor for some magazine that was doing a, a piece on Next Tech and try and you know, cozy up to me and ask me a bunch of questions. Um, and so, you know, when he says that, you know, rather than answer the question, how about rather than tell me who you are? How about rather than misrepresent yourself, Nathan? How about rather than you calling me and saying, hi, this is Nathan. I'd like to talk to you about your company. Having some woman call me on your behalf, misrepresent. What about that, Nathan? What do you think of that? Misrepresenting yourself to try and get information out of people. Not a good look, Nathan. Not a good look at all. Um, just continuing along here, etc. We bought this e-learning platform for 300,000 shares from previous COO, um, building that out. App portfolio. Yeah, we bought that. Um, that was created by me. Um, in 2015, going back a, a while, um, published over 500 apps, great experience. The apps did have a consistent history of generating profit and re established relationships with Apple and Google. Uh, we did write it down to zero. Over time, if you don't continue to upgrade apps, um, Apple will ultimately either force you to upgrade them, which is a huge um, amount of time and money, or uh, they will shut it down, shut down those apps. And so unfortunately, um, we had to write down that asset, but it was relatively um, 
minor for next tech. We were, we were going to do something with it, but you know, again, as a startup, lots of pivots, um, not a big deal for next tech. Hologram technology, yes, we licensed that. We thought we'd do some holograms with uh, art media. Didn't really turn into anything for us. So again, we pivoted away. Didn't cost us a penny um, either. There was nothing there. You know, you talk about related party. Uh, yeah, we signed a, a deal. There was no money that changed hands other than, you know, we purchased some equipment, um, but that's it. Um, live person. Yes. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you for bringing up live person. We do have a relationship and a partnership with them. Uh, we're integrating into their platform. They were a $2 billion market cap public company. Uh, Scott Starr. Um, yes, he's on our advisory board. He's not um, a board member. He's not an officer. He's not a director. Um, he is on our advisory board and he works at uh, live person. And um, he's a super, super guy. Uh, he loves augmented reality and he is a big proponent of augmented reality. And he, uh, he, he really believes that it's the next big thing. And he's pushing um, and selling really uh, our next text augmented reality to his clients. And if you look at the list of live person, it's Chipotle, it's Ashley Furniture, it's McDonald's, um, it's Home Depot, it's Lowe's. I mean, it's a who's who of Fortune 500 companies, and uh, we couldn't be happier with the partnership. We expect we're going to land a deal with them. Um, it does take time. It is a process, but it's a great transaction. Thank you for pointing that out, Nathan. Um, really appreciate that, and it is a big deal. Uh, I don't know, you know, you call it a related party partnership. I mean, that's a stretch of the world. I've never even heard. I've heard of related party transaction. I've never heard of related party partnership. Scott Starr is not, um, you know, running a related party partnership scheme with live person and next tech. It's kind of laughable um, that you would see that as a negative. Uh, we see that as a huge positive. So. That's that, moving right along. Um, there's a bunch of patents here. Some of these patents that we have are um, you know, relevant, some of them are not. Um, again, in the world of technology, you pivot a lot as an early uh, startup, as a young company. Next Tech has pivoted. Um, we will continue to develop new technology. Some of the old patents um, we're not gonna use. Some of them we will use. Um, it's really that simple. It's really that simple. But our play as a company was never about build a portfolio of patents and sell off our technology. Our, our play was always we're building platforms to generate revenue and um, take advantage of this mega trend, which is augmented reality, virtual reality, um, artificial intelligence and on and on. So our goal was never to um, necessarily uh, monetize patents. Our goal was to build businesses and the patents uh, would give us um, kind of a, a starting point where we would, we would start with those patents and then build from there. So, you know, again, Nathan, you know, look at, look at public companies, uh, look at, you know, patents and, and see, you know, some of them, I guess, work out, and some of them don't. Uh, you don't need to have patents that are, um, you know, the, the main event for a company. The main event is actually revenue and profitability, which is what Next Tech's building towards. So I'm just going to keep going here. Yeah, he talks about Canacube Live. Yes, Canacube Live was real when we started in the concept stage. Um, but again, we've moved away from that. We're not focusing on cannabis anymore. There's much bigger things um, for next tech than just cannabis. Um, when you look at uh, the three, 360 uh, photography, 
We acquired a company called Hootview back again, February 6, 2019. Um, it's not augmented reality. It's 360 degree product photography. It's an adjacent technology. It is not augmented reality. Um, again, the business cost us $65,000 US. It was uh, a low cost acquisition that um, you know we're using mildly these days. We have a couple of customers there, but it's not something that um, we're really that focused on. Um, again, you know, here's a reiteration about this nonsense from Nathan. You know, Mr. Short and Distort is at it again. Um, Seventy percent discount, not true. Twenty percent discount when we um, made our price reservation. The stock did go up a lot after we made our price reservation. So by the time we actually announced the deal, um, the stock was a lot higher. But um, again, that's not a negative. Uh, that money allowed us to build our, our company, hire more employees, um, et cetera, et cetera. And when the shares are unlocked, um, roughly 70% of those shares were purchased by uh, repeat investors, meaning investors that have been with us long term that continue to buy into our private placements. So um, I don't expect uh, a mass exodus from those shares and those shareholders. Um, as far as our financial reporting gap due to switching, yeah, I mean, our year end was March 31st. That was inconvenient for us. Um, it made reporting our quarterly numbers a little odd. So we wanted it to be uh, lined up with the calendar. So we switched it. Um, and it's a big benefit for our shareholders. In fact, we're um, doing our second set of audited financials. We expect to have our audited numbers out um, sometime in March. As you keep going, um, you know, just just for a moment, as far as our, our numbers go, I'm just going to comment that for, you know, we, we reported our monthly revenues for uh, January and even December, I believe. Um, and guess what? February, our e-com businesses look very, very strong. Months about his retirement. He retired from the industry. And so, you know, he was, he, it wasn't like he woke up and said, I'm retiring. He asked me, Evan, is it okay if, you know, this is our last quarter? Is it okay if I leave? And, you know, we had an agreed upon date. And so we went out and we started searching for a new CFO. And so when he left, we were prepared and um, he retired and Kashif Malik came in and Kashif is a great CFO full time. We went from, you know, a rent a CFO like Romeo's Gold had to a full time CFO, Kashif Malik, who, who was trained at Deloitte, worked at Merck. Now we have somebody full time, uh, which was a huge, huge uh, uh, positive for Next Tech and for all of our shareholders. Um, and everybody should be very, very happy about that. As far as the CEO leaving, he did leave. He went to Eng House for more money. And that's that. You know, we had somebody immediately fill that void. Happens all the time. Not a big deal. Moving right along here. Actual reality is quickly approaching for shareholders. Again, Nathan, I mean, you know, your ability to uh, create fear and doubt, I, I got to hand it to you that you're good at that. Um, but it, let's just be clear. This is your opinion. And um, your, your opinion really doesn't, um, mean that much in the real world. What really means something is our uh, shareholders, our technology, uh, which is very, very real and potent, our customers who are very, very happy for the most, most of our customers. You can't please everybody all the time, but most of our customers are very, very happy. 
Um, and then, you know, when you look at um, Next Tech and you think about us going forward, I want you to think about this. I want you to understand, Nathan, that Next Tech is a winner. Everybody that works at Next Tech are winners. Winners. We're very transparent. If you want to call me, I'm going to give you my phone number. Call me anytime, Nathan. 631-655-6733. That's my direct line. I am available 24-7. Don't have one of your you know, fake people call me. Call me direct anytime if you have a question about Next Tech AR Solutions. My integrity or the integrity of management at Next Tech. On that note, I'm going to end this by saying that we are also preparing, in addition to me going through uh, the short and distort report of, uh, of Nathan, um, we are also preparing a full-on demonstration of our technology. All of our employees are galvanized. Um, everybody at Next Tech believes in what they're doing. Everybody at Next Tech is proud about what they're doing. Um, and we will continue doing what we are doing, which is pioneering work, working to build a better future, working to build value for our shareholders. And that is what gets us up every morning. And that's what makes us excited to live on this planet today. Uh, Nathan, I wish you good luck. Uh, but I wouldn't bet on it. Thank you.